Oh, Tommy. <laughs> when he was younger, he used to help Mr. Cole with his farm, but that was a long time ago now. After Tommy finished high school and his now dead father moved out west, everyone says Tommy stayed because he didn't have enough ambition to pack his suitcase and go. Although it's a horrifying image, I know that on the night of his graduation he got drunk, jumped off the Hawkshaw Bridge naked, and nearly drowned. This, Tommy declared, was a life-changing moment. He would spent plenty of his time already getting bossed around by Mr. Cole, his father, his teacher, and he didn't want any time wasted against the gamble of what little he might have left. Tommy loved to repeat this story. Everyone's heard it. I found out about it in elementary school before I even knew what drunk meant. It's like Tommy thinks it's some important River Valley fable. But most people say that stupid drunken antics shouldn't be counted as a diviner of fate. Since it was obvious, Tommy had already turned bad along the way. It seemed a bit too convenient. Some people say he should have drowned. <laughs> Tommy doesn't have any sort of regular job. He works on and off at other people's farms, on construction crews, picking potatoes up river in season, or sometimes painting a house. Just long enough to make a little cash until whatever he's doing is half done or he quits. Mostly, Tommy survives on schemes. He's a good smuggler. Rumor has it he uses the one man, one dog, for a city crossing to Maine, so he makes a bit of money selling American cigarettes and liquor. He sometimes picks the dump for anything he can sell to the second-hand dealers in Fredericton. He picks fiddleheads and apples and raspberries and blackberries off other people's land. Tommy lived in a fixed-up hunting cabin down the same road as Alton Krauss. This might have been how they met, although my father says they seem like the type to have found each other anyway. He also said once that they were in, the de they were in a dead heat for the position of village idiot. <laughs> Tommy got on the wrong side of my father when he was helping a man my father hired. They were renting, renovating part of our porch so we could use it as a sunroom. Somehow, our cat Quilty got sealed behind the drywall. <laughs> I was nine and figuring she was gone for good, I began her memorial service preparations. It was only a poem, but still. Then, a few nights later, as I was drifting off to sleep, I heard meowing. I thought for sure it was the ghost of Quilty coming to say her final farewell. Except my father heard it too and followed the sound to the new sunroom. He punched his fist through the wall, and out she hopped. <laughs> wow, it seemed like magic, or a miracle. As I got older and overheard the story repeated when Uncle Kent and my father sat out in that room and smoked, I knew it was really half-assed Tommy, who had entombed and almost killed her. Thank you. <laughs>